while everybody's eyes were on the 100 in the past month or so, New Zealand quietly sneaked into England and are preparing for their limited over series against the hosts. Three T20Is followed by five ODIs is the itinerary. No test match, of course. But let's look ahead to the T20I series on this edition of The Outside View presented by Fast Enough. I have with me Ananya Upendra. Ananya, let's talk about this three T20I series. England are fresh off a win against India at home in the T20I series, but New Zealand, they one don't have fond memories of this format and then against New Zealand, against England as well. Your thoughts on how this series could shape up? I mean, coming off a really strong start to the home summer, it feels like England go into this series as runaway favourites, especially considering New Zealand's recent um, form in in the T20Is, they haven't they, they they managed one win I think against Australia. It was an against the odds win at home, but um, they got swept uh, 3-0 by England at home. So uh, I, I, it feels like going into the series, England probably have um, a, a much more of the advantage, I'd say. But then again, New Zealand they come in a, a couple of experienced players in their squad, so it's probably. England favourites, but I think New Zealand may pose a bigger challenge than they did in the home series. Right, you mentioned about the squads, Ananya. Let's kind of talk in depth about both these squads. Let's begin with England first. Look at that 15-member squad. It gives you a very settled look. Heather Knight, Tammy Beaumont, Daniel White, as well as Natalie Siver. The batting in the top four is taken care of. But two names, very interesting names, two new names in that outfit. Maya Bouchier as well as Charlie Dean make a first appearance in the squad. Dean is, of course, in very good form. Six wickets in that the 100 competition and Bouchier, of course, batting in that middle order at a very good strike rate of 143.75 in that, in that competition. So very good looks, very good. I mean, strong batting contingent yet again. But with Dean's present, I think that gives them a good balance as well. But who is missing out? Because these two names, of course, come in. But Fran Wilson, she's a very big miss. Had middling numbers in that 100 competition as well. Before that, lost her place to Sophia Dunkley. So I'm not sure how she can kind of make a comeback into this format. But remember, this is a very, this is a squad for just the T20Is. So she, you probably might think that she can, she would come back to that ODI unit. But there you go. That's the England outfit, a 15-member squad at home. But how do New Zealand shape up? What, what does New Zealand squad look like? Well, as I mentioned earlier, New Zealand's 16-member squad sees the return of two, two very, very senior players. Susie Bates is returning after a shoulder injury that ruled her out of that home summer. And Sophie Devine again, who took a break. Um, in between that home summer, she returns refreshed, rejuvenated and happy to take up the, the captaincy as well. But what New Zealand have kind of gained with their batting, they've lost with their bowling. You see the, the, a big miss in that touring party is the all-rounder Amelia Kerr. She's opted out of the series, choosing to, to focus on her mental health and well-being. And apart from Kerr's absence, there's Rosemary Mayer. She's been ruled out, unfortunately, due to a, an injury, a stress reaction in her left shin. So the two of them miss out, but there are three uncapped players who've been called up, Jess McFadden, Molly Penfold and Claudia Green, three three young players, two two seamers and a wicketkeeper. McFadden, in fact, earned her maiden central contract earlier this year. So there's some exciting names in that lineup, and it looks like a very very strong batting unit. Like I said, those two senior members come back, and aside from them, you've got Brooke Halliday, who's made a, a splash to start off her international career. There's the experience of Katie Martin, Lauren Down, Maddie Green as well, but. With New Zealand, it's always going to be how do they use their resources. That's always going to be the big question with them. Their bowling attack, it looks slightly wet behind the ears. I mean, you do have Leah Tahuhu, Lee Kasprick, one of the best T20I bowlers in the world. There's also Divine, of course. But when you look at the likes of Penfold, the likes of Claudia Green, we're not sure whether they'll get a game. But the backup bowlers look slightly suspect, especially with the form of Hayley Jensen. But Jess Kerr could play a big role in England England conditions. Speaking of playing big roles in the series, let's move to our next segment, key players. So, Darshanan, who do you think will play a big role for New Zealand in this series? I'm inclined to say Susie Bates because she's returning and she's returning after a lengthy break as well. So, I, I want to say Susie Bates. I'm just going to refrain doing that and putting extra pressure on her. 
but i'd like to see how sophie divine goes i think she holds the key whenever new zealand play she holds the key irrespective of how her form is and we everybody wants that super smash sophie divine or a wbbl sophie divine don't be so i'm going to say sophie divine is going to be the key for new zealand your your pick for the key player well like i mentioned earlier i think jessica just her swing she's going to probably play a, a big role um with the ball but you know i'm going to go against your prediction and and pick suzy bates as one of my key players simply because she has a very very good record in england she scored her only t20 i century there quite a few 50s she's done well in the ksl so i'm going to say suzy bates hopefully i don't jinx her indeed but uh, talking about england have you kind of picked a key player and is it a bowler again well surprise surprise it's well it's an all around natalie sivar i mean she's come off a fantastic series against india she looked brilliant through that 100 as well she seems to be dat- batting on a different planet so you know it'd be hard to bet bet against someone like natalie sivar so i'm picking natalie sivar um who have you picked i think we should have one hashtag team pacer in this show so natasha farrant is my pick i mean throughout the summer be it before the 100 or even during the england series against new zealand india we were talking about this being the summer of sofia dunkley but i'm going to say this is going to be a phase of natasha farrant because how i mean she's going through a very good form leading wicket taker in the 100 with 18 wickets and then when the charlotte edwards cup began she yet again returned to in fact an, as an all-rounder scoring 30 odd and picking up two wickets as well so hard to bet against her but i first i mean the first condition is that i hope she gets a regular go in that england 11 which seems very very tough at the moment but yes i'm going to stick to it and say natasha farrant could be my pick for the key player for england Well, there you go. Three T20s in store. The first of which is on September one. You let us know what your predictions for the series are, and of course, we'll catch you after the series to review and talk about all that happened in those three games on this very show, the Outside View, presented by Fast Enough.